Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 209 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Wesson Pew. Today, we've got a great show in store for you. This amazing Mitsubishi Modern House just came on the market in North Dallas, and we had to bring it to you. And in our second segment, we're going to talk about five home improvement trends you need to watch. It is a lot of information, so sit back and let's get started. So, it seems like that it's 75 degrees right now. And it's also December. How is that possible right now? It's January 15th. January, even worse. (laughs) I just don't understand what's going on right now. It seems like a lot. It is. It is a lot. It could be worse, though. It could be California, and it could be crazy um, rain, or it could be Alabama and crazy tornadoes. So I guess we'll take some sunshine and just... Not complain about it. Not complain. (laughs) Not complain. It was a low-key weekend. I think that everybody's just kind of, like, exhausted from the... From what the holidays mm-hmm. had, and I think everybody's just kind of relaxing right now, which is really great. I agree. We we didn't really do much this weekend. We went on a scooter ride. I think we went on three or four different walks this weekend, and we walked North Haven Trail twice. Oh my um, gosh. Greenway Parks over here by my house is a there's a, I mean it's not a track, but you just kind of walk through the neighborhood, and mm-hmm. it's really really pretty. I played pickleball and this weekend and played for like three hours. And I think I'm in pretty good shape, but um, nothing like doing a completely new activity to actually show you where you're not in shape. Mm-hmm. I was like, ow, oh, I was very sore. So mm-hmm. anyway, great weekend. We hope you had a great weekend too. And without that, without further ado, let's talk about what is happening in the market right now. So what we'd like to do is take a look at the last seven days that have taken place and in the Dallas area. And so right now, coming soon is not a required field, but it shows you that we're actually down 21% at 34 versus last week and new we are down four percent to 440 new homes on the market last seven days versus um 376 how's that right hmm. let's start over on the market watch this doesn't make sense right now oh 440 376 okay i'm like wait what okay so without further ado, let's get started and talk about what's happening in the market. So this is a snapshot of what's happened in the last seven days in Dallas, and we're comparing week to week. So coming soon is not a required field in MLS. So if you want to know what's happening, let us know, and Eric will help make that happen. We're down 21%, which is 34 units. What's come active in the last seven days is 440 units, which is down 4% versus last week. And the option period, once this is all agreed upon, what we see is two buyers and a seller coming together. That's where we stand. And this is actually up 20% to 340 units left this week. And the pendings uh, last week are up 19% to 123 compared to the week before. And solds are up 5%, which is 173 that have sold in the, the last week. Mortgage rates are uh, down a little bit. They were 6.28 was kind of the average last week, and they're down to 6.184. I think a lot of people are believing that in 2023, we're actually going to see rates come back down closer to that 5% number. I think that that is, if, as long as inflation continues to do what it does and taper off, mm-hmm. I think this will be one of the great things that we mm-hmm. see. But as you saw, as we talked about last week, there are so many other factors. One of the great things about this area is how good the employment is. So mm-hmm. it's a really strong thing. One of the things we'd like to point out is that we can get this information to you to help you make the best decision. If you're looking to buy or sell in there, let us know. And we'd be happy to make that happen for you. Mm-hmm. So which house are we going to talk about? So we are going to talk about 4007 Killian in North Dallas. And this is a really great, well-positioned, well-located, single-story, 4,000-square-foot mid-century ranch. It is great, and I will say this, it's so great because I live just around the corner. Love this area. It is a very easygoing neighborhood. One of the great things about this little area is the lot sizes. So this is actually a corner lot that's about 0.4 of an acre, which is really great. The other thing living in this area, you have really great north, south, east, west commuting. So you've got uh, Walnut Hill, Royal, and Forest all getting you east and west. And then if you're wanting to grab the toll road or 35, both of those are super convenient for you. They really are. And, um, you know, this is right across the street from where the new Thomas Jefferson High School has been built. And it is such, uh, it's so great to see yeah. the change come to this school. It was really well needed. Uh, this was, many of you know, was, was re- really destroyed by the tornadoes of uh, two years ago, three years ago now. And they have completely revamped the school. They have revamped, revamped the Walnut Hill uh, Elementary School into a Walnut Hill Leadership Academy. That's it right there that you see. 
you can see it's really it's all still under construction but it did open a week ago it is amazing space one of the things that um josh helped us as he toured us with in the house has pointed out that this is actually not the pickup zone in the area so it's on actual walnut hill which is really great keeps traffic down but it is a great um asset to this neighborhood so if you're not from dallas one of the other things that we want to point out is how great commuting is now we've talked about travel let's talk about using airlines so this is love field and love field is a great gym here in dallas and one of the things that we thought was really interesting about this uh youtube video is how quick and how it shows you what it's like inside they've done such a good job with the remodel whether it's the parking whether it's the food the restaurants this is a really great space. Really is the 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 renovation of the airport and the, the new construction on the airport, increasing the number of gates, has really been a big boom to Dallas. I feel uh, you know, for a long time, Southwest was the only airline out of there. Delta is out of uh, is out of there as well, and the, it's provided a little competition. Yeah. But you know, with Southwest Airlines, I was looking at a flight the other day to go to L.A. and they've got twenty flights every day going to Los Angeles. Really? So, yeah. It is an interesting, it is such a great thing now that the right amendment has been lifted and you can fly nonstop directly out of the state, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Again, this is a really great gym. And I think that so many times having this here, we forget what it's like for other people in other parts of the country, even as far as Austin, that don't have this ability to have this great airport within the neighborhood. So one of the other things that we want to talk about is Walnut Hill Recreational Center. We want to talk about this because pickleball in Texas is caught on like wildfire. One of the great things about this is they have outdoor pickleball courts and they have indoor pickleball courts as well you and i went and toured the facility it's amazing if you'd like to play please let us know we'd be happy to pick up a game with you so wouldn't we yeah we would we'd love to <laughs> this was it was really great because they do it uh what was it nine to nine to noon uh -huh. nine to one um every day, monday through thursday i think and it's just kind of a come in yep. uh, first come first serve sign up and have the indoor courts, outdoor courts. I I think feel like those were probably not as used as much as those indoor courts right. were, but indoor courts were really nice. They were not used on Saturday because it was so windy, but they were definitely used on Sunday because it was nice and nice and sunny. So yeah. it's it's a great place. Again, let me know. I'm minutes away from you guys. So the house that we're going to look at today is a four bedroom, four and one half bath, two car garage, pool. As Weston said, on 0.42 of an acre really a wonderful single family ranch i love this house and it was i loved it from the get-go and when we went inside i thought i fell in love even more so as you come in this front door they've done a great job of this renovation as you can see here this is one of the first seating dining areas that you have and they've done certain details like the little cutaway in the ceiling to help with the chandelier they've opened up the floor plan mm -hmm. i thought amazingly that just really provides a lot of versatility and i think that's one of the key elements in this floor plan is versatility inside and outside. It really is. And this is, a, you know, having all of the big windows, you get all of this great natural light. You've got the the natural wood color. And then the tile that they chose to go around the, the uh, fireplace was really just a great accent. And this is, again, another example of perfect uh, versatility because this could either stay as a small seating area, turning into a library, easily also become another little outdoor office. And you have a second uh, dining area here. This is more the formal area that's a little bit closer to the kitchen. Uh, butcher block countertops there with the waterfall edge, bar seating. I love that it's all one height. It's not that du you know dual height like many bars are. Um, soapstone. I believe you are correct. And it's also got a double oven, which is great. And it has more countertop space than you know to see. If we would move our heads, you can see that there's tons of countertop space right here. And this also opens up really amazingly to this outdoor area. And I love the fact that this was a very intense decking scenario, but there's also raised flower beds. There is a lot to do out here. And so it gives this house lots of versatility. So I'm gonna keep saying that. And this is the, the first bedroom that's on the front of the house as you go down the hallway. Really generous size on all of the bedrooms. This is the ensuite bath, and they did a magnificent job in the renovation of this. Subway tile going all the way to the ceiling in the shower, frameless glass uh, door, and then you step a little bit further, and here's the second of the four bedrooms. So I love this bedroom because it's got its own little microchip in and out doggy door and its own little dog run on that side, which is amazing. This one actually, this bedroom right here is a Jack and Jill to the one we just talked about and has a really good step out. Master and bedroom. Master bedroom is fantastic size, 20 by 17, 
room enough for a king size bed, sitting area, uh, separate uh, uh, dresser, and then you've got those big double doors that go out to the backyard. And those are powered blackout shades. And look at the spa bathroom. This spa bathroom has just about everything that you need. This is an amazing standalone tub right behind me. And you've got tub or towel heaters, and then a walk-in shower that has four heads. Yeah, that, that walk-in <laughs> shower is the right way to do it, I feel like. Uh, floating vanity with the double sinks. Uh, I love the vessel style sinks. They really kind of go along with that style of bathroom. We wanted to take you outside and show you this Michael Phelps pool with resistance because this is a really great way. As you can see, we transition into a guest house or a pool house because you can see through those double doors. There's the pool right there. And there's also the house on the other side. We love the fact that they've done a great job of creating this indoor outdoor feeling and the bathroom as well. This is a full bathroom here, and it also has a light kitchenette connects to it as well, which we thought was really great. Yeah, great storage. This could be, uh, you know, a secondary, uh, secondary space if you've got other family that needs to come to live with you, or if you've got buddies that need to live with you. It's a great space for that. This is the garage, and one of the things we loved about this garage is it's got the linoleum or vinyl flooring. Uh, I think this flooring. is epoxy flooring, yes, and it's got an air conditioned and heated workroom right through those doors. Great space. Really was. 4,007 Killian Drive, four bedroom, four and a half bath, two car garage, built in 1955, just under 4,000 square feet, priced at a million three forty nine nine ninety, which brings it in at $350 a square foot. Yep. And we want to say thank you so much to Josh Vernon for allowing to feature this amazing home. So in the comments, you're going to find a link. Click on that. Go through all the photos. There's a ton of them. Let us know what you think. If you'd like to see it, let us know, and we'd be happy to make that happen. And we'll be right back. Did you know there are a lot of ways you can keep up with us? For starters, every Wednesday at noon, we host Sold with Updike Pew, live from our Facebook and YouTube channels. Our show is dedicated to featuring some of the best homes in the Dallas market and about sharing timely information about market trends. But don't worry if you miss the show because you can always listen to them on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. Still want more? Follow us on Instagram where you get a first-hand look at what it's like to be a realtor. It's not always previewing homes for clients or getting them ready to go live in MLS. Lastly, visit our website and you'll be able to create a custom home search tailored specifically to your wants and needs that's timely and accurate. Whether it's square foot, location, or the neighborhood, we have you covered. If you'd like to know how much your home is worth, we can help with that too. Just visit homeprice.fyi, enter a few pieces of information like your home address, and we'll email you a price. When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be a Realtors for Life. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Second Segment, Episode 209 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Wesson Pugh. And today we're going to talk about five home improvement trends that you want to watch for. These are really interesting, too, because we are seeing a lot of these. Mm -hmm. um, the first one that we're, uh, that we're going to talk about is... Airbnb friendly spaces. Now, you know, I, I called it this because everybody knows what Airbnb is right now, but right. it really is talking about more than many times more having availability for more than one family to live together. I agree with that 100% because even when we market a house and it has a configuration that's like this, where it has a mother in law suite that has a separate entrance, we oftentimes, if it's in the area where that uh, Airbnb isn't quite friendly, we can market this as multi-generational and people absolutely love it. It gets so many more hits, I feel we, like. You know, we have, we've had several buyers in, in the last year that have, that has been one of their priorities. Yep. Donna McGill, for example, that was, they have a lot of international visitors and yep. they're going to have international visitors that come and stay three or four weeks at a time. Yep. And so they wanted to have that additional space on the other side of the house for that, you know, where, where people still had their space, but they, you know, you still were together. And I think that it is, you can also switch your mindset and uh, Airbnb doesn't have to be the entire house. You know, so many times we've seen AUDs, auxiliary dwelling units mm -hmm. that are small, almost like a she shed. Mm -hmm. Adam Sobolewski in West Dallas had one and it was such a great 
element when we listed it that I think that day we had over a hundred people. So if yeah. this is something that you're thinking about like spending your money on, let us know. We'd love to like visit with you and figure out what you're thinking. But these really do lean in and bring a lot of bang for the buck. And we've done a lot of research on uh, Adrian and I have because, you know, he's still considering mm-hmm. building one in, the back, in his backyard that is strictly for his office space. That's smart. Mm-hmm. It is smart. Number two is composite uh, composite decks. You know, the, the price of wood just was astronomical for a while. Right. This is kind of a side, side cut of what a, a composite a piece of composite wood is and this is a man-made product but it is the the cost of this has not risen as fast as wood mm-hmm. so the it's the 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 delta between the two has gotten a lot smaller the, I, and i think that the, the the difference between maintenance in these two is night and day absolutely if you're the kind of guy who likes to have a weekend project then power on and do your wood if because you're going to need a sand you're going to need a stain you're going to need a repair mm-hmm. you're going to need a level if you're the kind of person like myself that does not want to do that because I've got enough hobbies, spend the money on the track and make it happen. Yeah. One of the things to be conscientious of is the darker the color, they get pretty warm. So think about that when you make your decision because in Texas heat, if you're not shaded, they can get pretty warm if they're dark. Hmm. What's number three? Let's do lighting upgrades. Some people like lighting is their thing and kudos to them because I think whenever you go into house and you've got this ambient light throughout the soft, the warmth, it, it makes a home. And Edison bulbs are one of the quickest ways to add that element. And it's really great now that they've worked to create those filaments that create more of an actual design element as well, rather than just being the simple loop. These are excellent with or without a shade. One of the things that I'm always drawn to is being able to lower the temp on these. And LED lighting, especially under countertops is another really big trend that we're seeing. Um, there are uh, many of these that are now battery operated. Yep. And so even if you don't have the electricity and you don't want to spend for an electrician, that you can still provide this. You know where is one of the key places that I've seen that I love them? You do it in your house. You do it behind your TV and mm-hmm. it syncs with your TV. I think that's amazing. Last but not least, I also love them under the cabinets in the master bathroom. Mm-hmm. Being able to have that soft glow, in the middle of the night, I love it. I think it's such a nice touch. And uh, another trend that we're seeing a lot of are these freestanding soaker tubs. You know, many of the older homes that are being renovated, the the, the old short tubs are being pulled out. Mm-hmm. And these tubs that are most, more of a sculpture design, they're more of a, just a, a have a design aesthetic to them as opposed to that old shove-in five-foot tub that's tiled to and they fit different spaces now, which mm-hmm. is so great because in this next slide, you're going to see this is a completely different size, a completely different shape. And this is a take off of a Japanese soaking tug. And a lot of times it can also be done in wood. These are deeper. And so it's almost like you're sitting in these. They're amazing. That house that we had over there in Deep Elm that we had listed, mm-hmm. they had one of these the very first time I'd ever seen one. And I had to give you that, not to be a dork, not to do some <laughs> social media post, but I wanted to see how it felt. And I thought, what an interesting way to have hot water, like past your shoulders. Mm-hmm. It, if you get the chance, look into these things. You will not be disappointed. The amount of space they need is limited. I would put this on the do list, mm-hmm. definitely. And the last trend that we're gonna talk about that we're seeing so much more of now is uh, smart home technology. And you know, you can automate your home in so many different ways, but you can also just do little things to make it easier to live in. These plugs are amazing because you can do uh, a two amp charge uh, on regular USB, or you can do the fast charge on the USB C. Yes, and these are a must. I think that if you are putting these near your nightstand, this is where they have to go. If you're gonna put one in your living room, put it near your office space or where more people are going to use these. And this is my favorite. I had one of these in my old island where it would pop up and it would give me both plugins and USB. But what I didn't know that Jeff pointed out is this one is one that actually allows you to set your phone on top of it and charge that way. Uh, Really, really pretty cool. Great, 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 great design. And these are just some of the ways you can automate your home through your environmental control, video, audio shades, cameras, lighting, leak detection, irrigation, everything. Just don't forget to pay your uh, internet bill. Your internet bill, exactly. (laughs) So I hope y'all have found this helpful today. If there are any other trends you're seeing out there that you'd like us to talk about, if you're seeing any trends, just throw them in the comments. We'd be happy to hear about that. And just remember, we want to be your realtors for life. 
When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be a Realtors for Life.